for a few minutes. Okay, so we're going to get going. I think so. We've got about 10 people in, which is absolutely normal. Um, I think it's going to be a small crowd. It's sort of a, a great event happening tonight because I am super excited to introduce a new program that's going to be unraveling soon. And um, let's get into it. So who am I? Guys, if you wouldn't mind just turning your videos on, I know you probably haven't been to the hairdresser or maybe you're not dressed up in your favorite clothing. It doesn't matter. It just creates a, a more personal environment for everyone um, and uh, for me especially. So if you um, wouldn't mind just like, you know, switch your video on and um, that would be great. Celia, wonderful to see you. Uh, great, fantastic. We're going to get started just waiting for a couple more people to pile in. Because once you miss the beginning, you lose track of what's going on. So we're just going to delay for a minute or two and see if a few more people are going to uh, pile in. Wilson, welcome to you. Can you see me? I see you, Wilson Mancha, one of my my friends out there in the world. Uh, fantastic. So what is today about? Let's jump into the training. So this is called the hybrid launch formula. And what does that mean? Um, we're going to captivate clients. We're going to win more projects. We're going to reduce production stress and make more money. So I'm a design architect. And we're going to speak about that right now. Who is this for? This is for you if you use any of these design softwares. Maybe you use Revit Archicad, a SketchUp or Plan, Vectorworks, Chief Architect. If you're a designer and you're using a piece of software to design, this is really for you because I'm going to show you some things today, but you'd be better to relate to those things if you were a design architect, a building designer, if you're involved in building uh, designs, interior designs, urban designers, landscape architects, students of architecture, especially students of architecture. If you're missing this one, uh, don't miss it. So. If you're in any of those, you're going to gain a lot of knowledge tonight. What, it, what you can benefit by watching today is that you will be put on track to create stunning final imagery, right? You'll be able to work with stealth, which means that you're going to be working super quick. You'll be able to deal with revisions of your designs quickly. You'll also be able to crush deadlines which is like something everyone wants to do, especially if they're a designer. You want to eliminate stress, this is for you. If you want to relate to your computer as a creative tool, this is going to be like sort of uh, a gateway into that because a lot of people relate to their computers in a very rigid way. And the tool can be used the computer as a tool can be used in a very liberative way, which means that you can get a lot out of it. And if you have design phobia, many people have uh, software design phobia. They get onto their computers and they start panicking about which buttons to push to get things done. If that sounds like you, I mean, you can just in the chat, you know, you can say uh, that happens to me a lot. You know, flip, spend hours trying to work out how to do something. This is for you because we're trying to remove that clutter. So, like I said before, if you want to liberate your design process using a PC, then stick around for a few minutes. Okay. Why do architects draw, still draw by hand? What's the whole idea? Most architects still use, and building designers, interior designers, they still use freehand sketches and all sorts of hand drawings as a vital design tool particularly as the first steps in the process. There seems to be a close connection between the creativity that occurs in the brain and the process of producing a drawing by sketching freehand. So there's this mind and hand connection that architects love. You know, we need that ability to think and draw. And it is this process that can be recaptured in a similar way on a computer but a lot of people don't know about it. So as Alva Arta says, God created paper, 
for the purpose of drawing architecture on it. Everything else, at least for me, he says, is an abuse of paper. So he, he says, you shouldn't abuse paper. You should use it for drawing. So that's exactly it, you know. Let's just move on quickly. We're going to get into some really cool stuff. So stick around. What is a hybrid architect? I should have actually written design architect. Let's put design in here because um, really a designer, you need to be a designer. A hybrid architect goes beyond designing buildings by capturing the client's attention and engaging deeply in the design process. So your job's not only to be an, a, a building creator and then get it built, your job is to connect to your plant. If you connect to your plant, then the world gets opened up for you. And I guess it's like that with anything. If you if you play music, right? If you're a musician, then if you connect to your audience, they buy your albums. So that's the whole idea. There's a certain resonance in connecting with your clients. If you connect with your clients, they're going to become passionate about a process. So the real magic happens when we invite the client into our creative world, making them part of our design journey and the design team. And when you do that, you create rapport. The more we involve clients, the more invested they become in the process, making the project personal and meaningful to them. This personal interest can make securing the funding that is so dearly needed to fund your projects available. So that's the most important thing is to get your client to resonate with the design that you're doing for them. Using a visual design storing method, a storytelling method, you become a storyteller, a narrative creator. You can deeply entrench your clients into this process, making them feel that the design story is their own that's crucial I, I, the, it's so subtle yet a lot of architects miss it you know they understand that they're designing buildings but your client is super important mastering client engagement as designers we need to first attract clients and then we need to captivate them so you but okay it's it's sometimes it's very difficult to find lots of clients you know, architects in general, they're not like doctors. People don't have a, a sore tooth and come to an architect, you know, and say, can you fix my tooth up? Architects are not sought after the same way that doctors are. But if you do find clients, maybe you're in a small firm, maybe a medium-sized firm, maybe a, a large firm, and you have clients, then the next step is to engage with them. Right? Is everyone on track? You following me? I can't see anyone. Please turn your videos on. It makes just so much more vibrant for me. If you if you feel you can turn your video on because we have a small crowd tonight, it really has a huge impact when I'm chatting to you. I can see you smile. I can see you drink your coffee. And it really helps me in an amazing way. So if you feel that you can do that for me, that would be absolutely wonderful. I'm sorry if you think I'm being a little bit pushy, but uh, just really, um, it helps me a lot. So. I really appreciate it. Wonderful to see all of you out there. We can so, hear you very well. You can hear me very well? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. That's awesome. So how do you become a hybrid architect? What is a hybrid architect? The word hybrid. Did you ever, ever jump in a car that was half gas and half electricity? Sort of like, that's what a hybrid is. It's a combination of two strengths. You know, so a hybrid architect is a, an evolution of different things. Combining four softwares to make your workflow more efficient. So instead of using one software, maybe using like ArchiCAD or Revit, or maybe you only use one software. But the thing is, each software has a specific strength attached to it. So these days, there's so many softwares out there and it gets really confusing that you can choose the strengths of separate softwares. We're going to speak about that. And then you can mix them together in the, 
in a very easy way. So that's what we're going to be speaking about tonight. <clears throat> a hybrid architect is someone that needs to become more efficient in modeling and communicating design using the PC. It's super important. It's not just about presentation. It's about modeling. You can design in 2D, in CAD, or in SketchUp, in 2D, but then it's about modeling the design. Modeling is not just building. Modeling is design. It's even more intense than planning. So if you can design in 2D and in 3D and then present those ideas, then that's what I call a hybrid design architect. And if you get these skills at your fingertips, you need to be super fast. You need to be super fast at them because you need to get the stuff out quickly and it needs to be easy. It can't be difficult. It can't be something that, you know, you're thinking about how, which button I push, et cetera, et cetera. You need to have this hand to mind coordination. Like when you're sketching, there's a way to use the computer that you can use it in a very liberative way. And that's what we're kind of getting to. And we're going to take a look really in depth at that. So what are the benefits, right? What are the benefits of being a hybrid architect? Is that you're going to excite the client at every stage by having a superior grasp of modeling and visualization. That's what we just said. And it's going to affect your output. Your output is what, what's going to affect them. Just like when the Beatles composed their first albums, they impressed their audience. That was the whole idea, is they sold billions of copies. I'm not sure, maybe millions, but billions. I don't know. And so all the great bands, if you compare it to music like Coldplay or... or um, I don't know, whichever die straits or whatever bands you, you fanatically enjoy, then they've got that ability to communicate with the audience. And that's your, your necessity as a design architect. You've got to turn your PC into a revision machine, which means you've got to enjoy changing up your design. You've got to enjoy it. The client's going to tell you, change this, change that. Don't say, oh, I can't do it for you. I can't do it. Enjoy it. And the way you can make it work for you is if you make it easy. Is everyone following me? Yep. If you make it easy and pleasant, then you have no trouble because it's a game. It's like playing with Lego, like a child playing with Lego. So you need to get a level of expertise under your wings at your fingertips that give you the ability to move a, maneuver that way. So why should you listen to me? Who am I? I mean, like, really, like, you're listening to me now, but, like, so why are you listening to me? I've had 23 years of creating design proposals. I've done over 50 commercial projects. We're talking about hospitals, retail centers, hotels, resorts, um, all types of different things, different permutations. And I've been paid in a big corporate office just to launch proposals on a weekly basis. So that's all I did. I sat and I played for as much time as I could. I built a lot of uh, buildings as well, but my major thrust was um, raising seed capital for big companies. I've worked in several major companies in South Africa, here yeah, in the Middle East as well. I've made my life simpler, creating proposals and learning from my own trial and error. So, you know, trial and error is the key. You know, you can start off not knowing what to do, but after 23 years, you find ways of going home early. Uh, you, you need to because, you know, I don't want to stay at work through the night. You don't want to do that. You also may have a family or friends or loved ones, and you don't want to be behind the screen all the time. As nice and exciting as it can be, you need to really um, look after yourself, your mental health. We mentioned that learning from real world, sorry, learning from a real world experience. So this is not academic. There are a lot of teachers online that are academic. They've never worked in an office before or a commercial office. So this really just, you know, uh, comes around from uh, being in the real world and doing real world projects. You don't want to do this, right? And we'll just go quickly through that. You don't want to sleep through the night. You don't want to burn the midnight oil. 
and they teach designers. It's like the biggest fear you get to school at design school and they say, oh, you're going to sleep through the night. Oh, sorry, you're going to work through the night. You're going to get home for breakfast and you don't want to put yourself in that situation. It's not true. You do not have to be that way. If you know how to use the software and the, the workflows in the right way, you can really be stealthy in your approach. So what you want to be doing is you want to be with your family, your loved ones. You want to be able to go camping. You want to be able to pour hot coffee in the morning on the campsite. You know, you don't want to be stuck in your office. So this is me in one of the commercial firms in South Africa. And this is what I'd be doing on a daily basis. You know, and I love the printer. I love the printers, those big plan printers, you know, Hewlett Packards and printing. Hey, Jason. Yes, we're not we're not seeing your screen. We, I, I'm sure you are sharing your screen, but we're not seeing it. Oh my goodness me! Sorry, guys. Let me just do that. Are you seeing it now? Yes, now we can. Okay, sorry, guys. Sorry about that. So, there you go. Um, are you seeing? Uh, I've got a new computer here, so I must have just missed the button. You don't want to be sleeping on your desk or falling asleep at night. Sorry. There were visuals to everything that I've just uh, spoken about. But anyway, I guess it made sense. Um, so basically, that's what they teach you at design school. And we, we said that, you know, you want to be doing this during the week as well. You want to be able to get out there and enjoy the, the world that's around you, not just your computer screen. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're hiking, if you're going biking or camping, whatever, you need to make time for that. So you need to become more efficient at what you're doing. This is me at Stouch Foster in uh, South Africa. And this is what I'd be doing on a, a daily basis. I'd be uh, creating proposals for different projects. And it's super important that uh, you become efficient like I did, because this would be a, maybe a, a day or two project. And uh, I used to love printing out on these brand printers. But when you take a look at working in a big commercial office, you can sort of get pigeonholed. And but if you don't want to be pigeonholed, then you know, you've got to think beyond your time in a commercial office because one day you may want to move past that into your own sort of practice. So this is the type of work I would be doing. I'd be doing uh, retail planning. You know, we'd design buildings in 2D first, always schematic stuff in 2D, obviously to scale, um, and that's where it all starts. You know, it all starts at this level. There's a big retail shopping center. You can see there's a McDonald's. And this is an addition. The colored area is addition. So this is typically where it all begins, you know. And then these are just different versions of it, obviously, from CAD to PDF. Can everyone see these? Yes, we can see it. Okay, great, great. And then once you've achieved schematic design, at a certain level, then what happens is the 3D manifestation of that, obviously to show the clients. And here are just a few of the projects, you know, I've done many different projects over the years, SketchUp, Sorry. Vray. Um, Sorry, Jason. Yes. Sorry, I don't think we're seeing, we've just seen one slide so far. That's crazy. Give me one second here. Okay, let's go back. Okay, did you see the slide? No, we did not see that one. Gosh, I'm having trouble with Zoom tonight. And 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 now when I move, can you see it? Now it's yes. good, yeah. Yes, now. Okay, I apologize to everyone. Let's just backtrack. So this is the whole idea of not sleeping through the night and then being spending time with your family. You can see that? Yes. yes. Okay. And then there I am with the plan printers at SVA in South Africa. Uh, I used to love the plan printers. This is the type of work. Can you see this retail plan? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is the type of work I would be engaged with on a daily basis. We start off in 2D and then obviously we're going to evolve it into a 3D proposal for the client. And normally these projects took place over two to three days from beginning to end, including the planning. You know, sometimes you'd work with other people in the team. Sometimes it would be a solo sort of practice. But here are just different uh, commercial uh, plans, you know, parking areas, basement areas, and so on and so forth. And then there would be a manifestation of it in a presentation format 
as well, you know, as 3D. So this process from schematic plan to 3D model. And then different softwares like V-Ray, this is just SketchUp and Photoshop. So they're different mediums. Like if an artist uses watercolor or acrylic or oil paint, so there are different ways that you can produce stuff. And we're going to take a look at some really cool stuff today. Um, let me just see. We've got 15 people here. So great. No one signed off because my images weren't working. This is Lumion, a proposal for a city somewhere in Africa. Um, this is uh, uh, Lumion as well a proposal for a museum that I did down in the city of Eilat, which is next to Aqaba in, in the Red Sea, uh, Nigerian uh, office blocks in Lagos, Haras Towers here in the Middle East, um, just different proposals, um, 15 hectares of design in Akura in Nigeria. And then what would happen out of all these projects that would get produced is that some of them would manifest as built fabric. And <clears throat> over 30, 40 projects, you might find that five or six of them become real in a big commercial practice. So what a big commercial practice needs to do is it needs to have churn. So it has to have lots of clients and it needs to be producing a lot of proposals day in and day out. And then it's sort of like a machine. The smaller practices are different. They kind of function in a different way. But the bigger practices need to fuel their staff. So if they've got a, a staff contingent of 100 people, you need to be paying salaries to 100 people. So you need to be able to, um, you know, uh, have a lot of new work, big work coming in. And they also have a lot of credit roles, so which means that they can support a process for a long time and without going bankrupt. And most do go bankrupt, but we won't speak about that. Now, um, I am... Uh, an online marketer, I uh, try and uh, associate to some of the big names. You've got Eric Bobra here. He, he deals with Archicad. We've got Nick Catelia, the Balkan architect, Blue Turtle, just different people that I've interacted with and, and, and been on YouTube with. And so um, I'm not someone that hasn't been around and we've done over 50 launches and it's been a super exciting journey. I've been privileged to teach hundreds of people um, these processes um, and just really privileged to have connected with so many people. In fact, I can see Jerry Sperling there. I think she's in the group, but she was part of the process a while back. And welcome to you. So where have we come from? This is where it all started, right? This is where it all started. And where did it land up, you know? So it started with... Uh, no CAD, no computers, rotring pens, maybe even ink pens at some stage. And then we evolved quickly through drawing boards. You know, the drawing boards got better. And then we evolved to the three screen process where I've only got two at the moment, but this, this guy's got three, where it really is that way in offices these days. And there's just so many softwares to choose from. But the whole idea is how do you use your tech as a way to reiterate your designs. And we're gonna speak about that now. You know, Albert Einstein says that intellectuals solve problems and geniuses prevent them. So your whole idea is to, you know, not follow the masses. Don't go and follow the sheep because they say do X. You know, people say, oh, buy my software, buy this, do this. You've got to understand that there are specific ways to pull these softwares together that can really be beneficial and could possibly even 10x your productivity if you know how to do it. So it's super important to have a foundational understanding before you venture into the world of architecture, because there may be things that are just burdening you right now or bottlenecking you. And maybe it resonates with you, maybe it doesn't, but I do believe it's a big problem in the world. So <laughs> this is really my process i'm going to speak about the process and why it's so efficient okay we're talking about efficiency here and we're also talking about creative liberation we're talking about being super creative so let's take a look here in the beginning guys can you see this it says sketch up here can you see that okay so this is 2d schematic design i use SketchUp a lot for it because it's really really amazing 
but you could be using 2D AutoCAD or a 2D CAD package to do it. But a lot of architects don't know that SketchUp is super versatile when it comes to 2D design. When you're doing planning, when you're shifting walls, when you're putting bathrooms and toilets and doors and all that type of stuff, SketchUp is mind-blowingly easy. Okay, you don't get involved with too many uh, technical uh, issues. You know, you just rub out stuff. It works like a pen. And then, obviously, getting into Revit, and we're going to get into Revit tonight, guys. I'm sorry, I'm just going to pause, uh, unmute some uh, people. I'm going to mute people. Okay. Revit, why, why not ArchiCAD? Because ArchiCAD doesn't have the massing tools that Revit has. Revit is the only package in the world that has something called a massing tool. And we're going to take a look at that in the beginning. We're going to take a look at that right now after this, these couple of slides. And we're going to jump into uh, why Revit's so special. And then, obviously, once again, you see SketchUp here. Why do we use SketchUp for for precision, uh, this should actually be visualization, visuals, or di dynamic visuals. Why do we use SketchUp for, for visuals? I'm going to show you tonight as well. So stick around, don't go. Uh, it's all about visuals, okay? And how to get your design into a visual process. And then... What else happens in SketchUp is we can control the design. So we can produce the design in Revit, but then take it into SketchUp again, and then really control what happens in it from the entourage that gets in, embedded into the model, which means like cars, trees, planes, um, swimming pools, tennis courts, whatever you're going to put into your design, um, you can do it in SketchUp and not in Revit. So SketchUp is a marvelous, marvelous tool. And there, you can see here in the middle are our rendering softwares. Now, there are ways to skip all of these rendering softwares by using something called the Art for Render, which I normally train people in. And you don't need to use any render software. You can just use SketchUp and Photoshop and create the most mind-blowing uh, artistic renders. But tonight, we're going to take a look at something new, which is called the D5 render, right? We're going to take a look at that. It's mind-blowing because D5 render, it's not artificial intelligence, but it's better than artificial intelligence because it gives you the ability to do stuff that AI cannot do, you know? Then we have artificial intelligence, which people are going, oh, I can use it. It does amazing stuff. Okay, it does amazing stuff. There's no process involved in it. You have no control over it. And then once you've created the images that you've created, you don't have plan sections and elevations of it because the AI pushed out something, you know, unless you're using like Verus, it pushes out something that you don't really have enough control over. So as a designer, I love having that process. I love having that control. I don't want AI to design for me. I do not like it. I mean, it's nice for ideas. But once those ideas come to the fore, then I prefer to do it myself. But maybe if you're not a designer, you think it's cool, that's all right. I mean, it's absolutely fine by me. But I just feel that AI has got its place. But right now, it's super important to still have control over your process. And we're going to take a look at this. These are the old traditional ways that people have been rendering. They use all these softwares, Lumion, Enscapes, Twinmotion. But they're becoming a little bit top heavy now. Everything's becoming a little bit top heavy compared to what's what's happening with AI and with D5 render. You you can't really, it's a different league, you know. It's sort of like things are becoming history in a way. And um, unfortunately, those companies are going to have to be radically uh, um, um, undisrupted by this technology and find some really amazing ways to move forward. So then we use post-production techniques in Photoshop. Photoshop is an amazing, amazing artistic studio. It's like walking into an artistic, an art shop and having everything at your disposal without having to pay for it. Photoshop is a mind-blowing tool. When it's on the screen, it might not look like it, but it's just got everything that you need to be an artist. So we do a lot of post-production. What that means is that once we've created our images in in our program, we 
take it into Photoshop and we we kind of soften it up and make it more humane and bring a human touch to it. And then what we also use Photoshop is for now. So we're going to take a look at these processes. They kind of look like this. This is sort of them sort of distilled into a, if you call it a visual way. You've got the schematic plan. You've got the model here from Revit. Then you've got the, the SketchUp model that's been embellished uh, with all the stuff like cars, trees, planes, airplanes, whatever you've got. And then in Photoshop, you put it all together and use it aloud. And all these tools combined will really give you control of the process. If you're going to be using the Artful Render here, or if you're going to be using the D5 Render, um, it doesn't matter. It's all almost the same process. But once you can get these tools under your, your, your fingertips, then you can really just change the game. I know it sounds like a huge thing, but it's not. It's not. It's just a question of having the right structure in place. So let's take a look at this. This is the virtual drawing board. And why, why do we need a virtual drawing board? Because there are many iterations of your pro project, right? Every time you're going to create something, you're going to have a meeting with the client. And the client's going to say, no, I don't want this. I want that. You're going to meet with them again. And several times. 16 times in this particular image, there's a process. And every single time you meet with the clients, there's going to be a change. Sometimes it can be less than this. I'm just like being a little bit dramatic here 16 times, but maybe it's eight times. I don't know. It depends how, how many times you meet with your clients. So at the end of the day, you've got to decide, you know, what process you're going to put into place to meet with your clients so that it's not a, a headache for you each time. You know, you want to enjoy the design process. You want to enjoy your life. You want to come home early. And yet you still want to meet with the client and make a, a design proposal every time. And there are ways to do it and really to be easier. So firstly, what we're going to look at tonight is we're going to take a look at um, three softwares. We're going to take a look at Revit. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in SketchUp. And I'm going to show you exactly what we've spoken about uh, uh, with D5 Render, and we're going to see how one can pull it together in Photoshop too. And I'm not going to go into details. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a deeper view, and then we are going to um, just take a look at that. You know. So I just want to before before I show you all of that stuff, I just quickly, quickly, quickly want to show you what my students are doing, so you can see that you know we actually. Um, are involved in doing amazing, amazing work. So I'm just going to show you a few images. This is the Artful Render. Obviously, there's another style. So there are two styles. This is the Artful Render. I'm going to, can you see this pub? Can everyone see this pub? Okay. So this is one of my students. She had never, ever done any 3D work before. Uh, this is last August. Um, or earlier this year, but in August she joined and she never ever had modeled the building or an interior. This is a real design in Switzerland uh, in a Bauhaus building and she created this absolutely amazing render of it. So she, her name's Angela and she's been an absolute uh, dream to teach because she just created this marvelous image and this type of image lends itself to a handcrafted image. And when something's handcrafted, the client can sense that it's handcrafted. And they think, wow, this architect, how does he know how to do that? And so if you move on, you know, they're just different projects here from different, I'm just gonna go through them quickly, urban designs, part one, you know, we can see the resolution here is really amazing. So when you print it out on A3, it's just absolutely phenomenal, different urban designs. This is a project that he won. It was a, about two months ago, we did a, a competition and he designed this using SketchUp uh, and, and Photoshop. That's it, nothing else. And uh, I think he used maybe a little bit of uh, a Rhino as well, but you don't need Rhino. And he created this magnificent project. So you can see the intensity of what actually can transpire if you know how to 
uh, involve yourself in a process that really um, you know gives you the ability to move in stealth mode. The level of these images are just absolutely incredible. You know, there's if you take a look at them, they are activated with life. You can feel a sense of scale because we use similar tricks that Frank Lloyd Wright used, and we put people into our designs. We we kind of activate the space. You know, if you show your buildings without activating the space, they really will look dead. And you can win any project with this type of drawing. Anyway, let's just move through through a few of them quickly. You know, here is a magnificent elevation. We looked at this last week or the week before as well. But take a look at the quality of this elevation. This is Photoshop and SketchUp. No 3D uh, render software in between. So just absolutely magnificent work. And you can see the, the, the rustic sort of feeling that he's managed to capture in this particular perspective. And, and the beauty about it is it does look handcrafted. OK, so we're going to go through quickly uh, different artists, architects, designers uh, showing their, their, their work here. Magnificent stuff. Take a look at this. You know, imagine showing your client this level of perspective, uh, manifestation of your design. You can do it too. And everyone can do it. This is uh, just some, you know, beautiful planning here. And then this is a manifestation of what she views that she is going to be building. She wanted to look like a Copic marker and she came up with her own style. And then you've got stuff like this, you know, um, just a lot of line work, a lot of shadow work, a lot of, um, you know, understanding about composition. So it's not just about using a software and just, you know, outputting whatever it does for you. You have to be part of it. I mean, you know, AI is not going to put a car in there for you by the garage at the back. It's not going to think about how you should create this foliage at the front door yet. It's not going to give you those nuances. You know, it may give you some nuances, but, you know, it, it's just that, that in essence, you want to be able to do it where you want to do it, not where the AI wants it. Let's just take a look. Here's a, an interior, if you're into interiors. Um, making them look Copic rendered, you know, making them look as amazing as this. This is Brigitte. She's just mind-blowingly brilliant. She has been part of the program and she is so busy at the moment that, uh, you know, she's doing great stuff. I, I chatted her with her yesterday. But just, you know, communicating design at this level is, you can imagine what it could do for you, um, you know, with, with cloud meetings. Okay. So just different interiors here and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through everything, but I'll just show you interiors here for hotel lobbies. <clears throat> and as you move on, you know, just different projects. So let's take a look at Revit now. We're going to jump into Revit. So it doesn't look so friendly, but here we go. I've got Revit open. Can everyone see my screen? Everyone's on board can see my screen, right? Yes. Yes. What can you can you see buildings? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is a project that's called Silo Towers. Um uh this is what the building looks like in Revit, right? And we're particularly talking about the massing tool in Revit. Now, in order to get from this model over here where my cursor is to this particular model, probably takes about 40 minutes, you know, to break it up. And the beauty about Revit is that it allows you to create this sort of like jelly-like building or envelope. And then it allows you to divide the envelope up into level lines. You can see on the left, it's the same envelope that's been divided up. Right? Can you see that? Now, if I wanted to put a floor here, I could just click on a floor and then I create the floor and it creates a complete floor, right? So Revit is just a really amazing tool because for instance, I could take this envelope here and I can move it around a little bit. Like I could take this wall, pull it out a bit, and then I could recreate all these floors 
really quickly, like I just did there, but it's different to that design. So I can reiterate really quickly in Revit and I can add walls to this process too. Okay, so Revit, a very powerful tool. And eventually you get to this probably, you know, after you've been modeling for a while, um, an hour or two, if you're just beginning. Um, and there are ways to create these models in Revit, you know, which means that you can literally create the envelope of any building and, and play around with it. Let's just jump into SketchUp. So once you jump into SketchUp, what happens in SketchUp is that, let's just take a look at this, is that this is Silo Towers, the building you just saw. You'd bring it into SketchUp, and then you would start doing a whole bunch of extra stuff, you know, like adding people. Let me just unhard all here. You'd put in trees. You know, you would design stuff. Like, for instance, if I wanted to put another lake here quickly what I could do is I could just come into SketchUp and I could put another lake really quickly you know I could design stuff in SketchUp in in seconds literally and you know there you go I've got a lake if I don't like that lake I can go and tweak it a little bit I can make it round there and I can clean it up and so on and so forth so it's really easy to work in SketchUp now I could also do stuff like I could add to my building um, you know, if I wanted, I, I didn't like this wall, I could go and change it up in SketchUp really easily. You know, I could go and put windows or I could kind of put recesses in and I could do a lot of stuff in SketchUp. I can tweak things in SketchUp. But really what the beauty about SketchUp is, is that it gives us the line work. And <clears throat> when you when you take a look at the way SketchUp works, you know, let's just go into a nice color here, not this mustard color. There you go. So you get the most amazing way to view your model. So you could be working together with Revit and SketchUp and back and forth things. So if I didn't like what this building was doing, I could simply just jump back into Revit and just go and tweak it here and send it back to SketchUp within seconds, and it will come and pop back in here, and it will pop in amongst the cars and trees. But then you can see here, I can move around my building, I can absolutely take a look at what it looks like. But the beauty about SketchUp as well, <coughs> excuse me, just quickly I'll show you, is that it has shadows. So you can get a real good feeling about your, your, your model, your shadows, you can absolutely play around with all this type of stuff so that you it, it helps you design and you can get into your process. You can say, okay, this looks like a restaurant, a coffee shop here, here and a commercial building. And I want to change some stuff around. And it's really easy because you could just go in here and move a table. You know, if I wanted to move this table around, I can just move it, right? Take a look at that. Just putting it wherever I want, you know. So it becomes a lot of fun. And you can do this with interiors too, you know. And then you can also sink down into your design and say, wow, this really looks cool. This is going to be a car showroom, you know. And maybe when I render it properly, I'll put a, a Ferrari in there or a Porsche or whatever, you know. Um, so it really gets exciting, you know. And the whole idea is to start to understand your model. And Revit doesn't allow you to understand your model in this way. It doesn't give you that feeling, that ergonomic feeling. It doesn't allow you to sink down into your project. But anyway, so that's SketchUp. SketchUp's got amazing tools. Um, you can also change your camera angle. You can change your field of perspective. You know, you can distort your perspective, uh, play with the camera angle and so on and so forth. And it's just really amazing. But at the end of the day, once we finished with our project, we are going to take our images into Photoshop and there's a whole process. It takes time to learn the process. I'll just show you what uh, some of these images look like. Uh, if you remember my student images, but this is some of the images from um, uh, this particular project. <clears throat> this is how they, they manifest. You're looking at about 20 minutes an image. Um, 
using the same exact model that we just uh, took a look at now and um, a little bit older, I guess, but you can go into it and you can see, okay, in, in, in a day, you can hook up a project like this for your clients, you know, and you can tell them exactly what your vision is so that they can start to think about it as well. You know, this could be a concept level. It could also be further down the process when you move into your drawings. And so this is the, the, the art for render. It's more of a, I guess, unrealistic render. But what I found in my career is that this type of render pleases the client more than a photorealistic render. You know, the client really enjoys this type of image and it really is something that one needs to understand because we're not looking at things from our perspective. We're looking at things from the client's perspective. Is everyone on board with me? Everyone there? Everyone still awake? Yes. Yes. Okay, great, great. If still you, here. You know, okay, great. That's fantastic. I can see uh, Ibun, Michael, Stuart, Peasley, Jerry, Michael van Rensburg, Jamie. Wonderful to uh, see you here. So we're going to jump into D5 Render. Why is D5 Render so special? I'm going to show you now. Prepare to like be blown away. If you're not blown away by this, then maybe you shouldn't be a designer. Um, so this is what this exact model, I did it just before we uh, we came into the group tonight. And I'll just show you the level of D5 render you can. Now, this is more so a photorealistic render, but D5 is just something called a real-time render viewport, which means that whatever you see, you get. It's not like Lumion or Twin Motion. Everything that you're viewing right now is live and it renders live. So this is the future of rendering. So you could really get into your design here, you know, on a different level. So this is from SketchUp into D5, because if you take a look here, if you, you can synchronize D5, it's got a live synchronization. So if you do, do change something in this model, it will change in this as on, on the other screen. So what I wanted to show you, maybe I can show you, I'll show you how it works. Okay. Okay, here's SketchUp on the left. Can you see both of these screens, everyone? Yes, yes, you can see both. Yes. Okay, great. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna find the synchronize button, hopefully. Let's just synchronize again here. I'm just looking for my sync button here. Okay, here's my sync button. It's a synchronized button, right? So you push this button. Just give me one second. I need to just get out of a render mode here. So you go and you push this button. And what it does, it synchronizes both these models. Okay. Mm -hmm. Watch what happens. Can you see I'm turning the one on the left? And the one on the right is following it. If I zoom in, they both zoom in together. So there's a synchronization between the two softwares. And that's the power of this, because now you can mix these two different styles together. And you can do amazing stuff. And then last but not least, you know, really what the power behind this is, is that you can put presentations together. You can build your models. You could take a day to do what I'm about to show you in the beginning. You could do it in a few hours. Doesn't matter what type of uh, project you're running, but you, you could really do crazy stuff. Let me just show you a little bit about D5 Render just so you can get excited. Um, so it's a real-time render window. Oops, give me one second. Okay, so now let me explain it to you. Like if you decide to, to put a tree in D5, you don't want the AR. Give me one second. So D5 has assets. It has all types of assets, which means models. So let's say you want a tree, right? So you can go into um, the model library here. 
into nature and you could go into broadleaf and you could go and take a tree over here right and then can you see what i'm do doing on the left here let me just take can you see that i can move it and put it anywhere now what i could do as well is I can, sorry guys, I can use a brush and I can take that same tree. Let's take that same tree, right? And the has got a brush where you can actually paint. You can paint the trees. So you could just go for it and paint your foliage. So if I want another tree, right? Maybe I want this conifer, I don't know. Let's see. I want this cypress tree. And then you can go for it and just give it a little bit of a paint, right? Okay, didn't uh, position it. Let's try again. Let's try and get it out. No, it's not doing it. Maybe, there you go, let's try that. Okay, I'm not sure why, maybe my internet's a little bit slow. So there you go, you can paint trees. I'm not getting success out of it. I'm not sure, maybe the Zoom session is just uh, causing a little bit of a problem. Oh, here we go. There we go. So there you go, you've got different trees. And when you take a look at DeFi render, every single leaf is rendered. So that's one cool thing. And besides that, what DeFi render does give us is it gives us a ability to to play with lighting can you see how i'm changing the lighting here instantly instant lighting which is pretty mind-blowing now you can see there's a bit of a mess here because it brought the sketchup trees in as well so what i could do is i could go into sketchup and just switch these trees off like i could hide them here and they should hide in here as well and they just did so so you can see how the softwares are working together and that's really what's mind blowing about uh, mm -hmm. using this technique. So that's in a nutshell. I hope that really makes sense to you. And I mean, I'm gonna open up for questions just for a few minutes. I just wanna um, say that um, <clears throat> next week that I'm organizing a special case study group for hybrid design architects. I like to call call it the Maestro's program, but it's actually called the Master's program. I'm taking a small group of individuals who want to improve their ability to visually engage with clients and significantly liberate the way they work with the design and presentation software tools that I've just showed you in the next eight to 10 weeks. You'll understand how to do this all. It's not a quick fix. I'm not into people that are interested in quick fixes. I'm interested in training people to become masters. That's what I do. I don't train people to um, do quick uh, LinkedIn courses. This is something that takes time. You know, it's like playing golf. You can't just hit the ball down the fairway. You need to really practice. So together we'll evolve the way architects traditionally work and look at shortcuts in production that reflect mind to hand freedom, what we've been speaking about right now. And also before you decide to join, I'll be sharing case studies. So I'll show you other people that have used this process before. And if you're interested and want to get started, then all you've got to do, guys, is go into your inbox and hit reply to my email and put the word direct. And then um, that will come straight back to me. And then I will send you, you know, some more information. That's all you've got to do. And if that resounds with you, just Jason at the Concept Design Architect, that's the one that you've been getting my emails from, just hit reply to it with the words direct and um, I will get back to you. But other than that, any questions? I really had a great time showing you everything tonight. Um, and I want to get some feedback from you and hear what you think about all of this. Is everyone there? Okay, I'm going to unmute everyone. I guess that's the best place to start, right? Um, well, how do you unmute? Oh, here we go. Ask all to unmute.
Is everyone there? Charles, Brian, any questions? Jerry? I found the D5 rendering program really interesting. I'm actually downloading it as I'm watching you right now. I didn't realize there was a program that could work with uh, SketchUp that closely. D5 render is free, by the way. Uh, it is a free version. It works exactly mm -hmm. like the version. So it's free. And you can, the only problem with D5 render is you need a strong video card. Um, mm. Yeah. So Jamie says, Jason, thank you for the presentation. Have a great rest of the week. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Nicolette. Uh, okay. Something's wrong. I can't unmute, says Jerry. Let me see if I can unmute you, Jerry. Any questions, guys? No questions. No questions. It's fantastic the way you uh, get this all lined up and to work in sync. Very, very good. Thank you. Okay, cool, cool. Who said that? I actually didn't see who was chatting there. It was Charles. Yeah. What I what I noticed in your presentation is like uh, it's not like uh, you are against uh, photorealistic uh, renderings because when you apply to you know for work you know at different locations they are always looking at your portfolio to to produce this realistic uh, you know rendering this finished product. Yes. But I see the way that you are, you know, your approach is a more relaxed way. Uh, my question is, is, is this working? Is, it looks like it's working well, well for you in these commercial companies. But I also think like, you know, you still have the competition and you still have these companies who are demanding this realistic, you know, like almost finished product, which is take a lot of time you know, and put yeah. a lot of pressure in, you know, on the professionals. You see these images here, Celia? Yes, I see. I, I did it in 10 minutes before this meeting. That's that's what I say. This is amazing because you see, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> so companies, companies that I work in the past is like, uh, you know, some yeah. of them, they do not understand the process. Some yes. of them, they don't even want to engage the to shame from you know from two two uh uh two d to three d because they and if they're still out there they they still find it like you know the client is not going to pay yeah the 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 effort of you know bringing the 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 project to to almost finish product so they no, i get it i get it they but... they decide not to even go for it but you know, if you can produce this in 10, 10 the renderings in 10 minutes, but you know, the modeling, it, you know, doesn't take 10 minutes. Well, if you're using the, the massing tools in Revit, it, you can get really good well, at it. Rev, it Revit, like an hour or two. Yeah, yeah, Revit, Revit, say, mm -hmm. I, I, I have used Revit in the past. Yes. And, but it, did, it didn't took, it didn't took me. No, because exactly, exactly. The thing is that Revit, Revit if, you're going to, if you're going to draw in Revit uh, manually, you're going to put walls and stuff. Massing isn't that. Massing is, is a, a quick way. Of... Yeah, yeah. I, I mass and then, you know, from concept, from massing, the, the project went into, you know, into a concept development. Yes. And then you know all the glazing and da, da 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 da. You have to you know you have to go. It goes fast. It's true, yes. especially when you know up after the certain floor level, it's yes. just a repetition, 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 which I hate repetition. But, Anyhow, but ma ma massing you you do the whole entire envelope of the building. Yes. What happens on every floor? That's for you to do manually, like with if you're talking about walls. So each yes. floor might have different wall structure, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. That's why you've got to do a 2D schematic in the beginning. You've got to work out what your building's doing. But once you get into 3D massing, um, the whole envelope of your building happens at once. Yeah, definitely. And then what happened, what happened is I I didn't use SketchUp. Like this is the first time that I see, you know, we are going from SketchUp into Revit and then from Revit SketchUp. 
Yes. Usually in academics, they don't teach you that. They teach you SketchUp over there, and then you go Revit over there. Yes. And this is the first time that I see the SketchUp and the Revit going in this kind of integration, which is a fantastic. And then what I did to finish the, the, the thing, the project, even didn't occur, occur me to do the Photoshop, but yeah. I went to Enscape. Okay, so, so D5 render replaces Enscape. In Enscape, and then I populated in Enscape, in Enscape, uh, Enscape, which I love it because, you know, even you can see the 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 tree the the leaf everything is moving and the water yes. is moving it, it was fantastic but you know I, I also enjoy Enscape I hear you exactly Enscape yeah. Enscape's got a nice feeling but D five render is far more efficient yeah I have to see this product I haven't seen this is the first time that yeah. I you know you need a special you need a special video card you need an RTX card for 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 D five because it's okay works on the new technologies in your machine. But, yeah. but I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed to see, you know, the, the, the how cut, you know, the productivity time, how, how you manage to cut it down and still, you know, to make it uh, airy. It's mean not so heavy, like uh, you, you are not overwhelmed. You know what I mean? Yes. You 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 see it. You appreciate it. It's light. It's you know. It's it's very. Um, how can I say? Uh, it have a soul. You know what I mean. It's yeah. not mechanic. Yeah. You know what I mean. So yeah, exactly. the, you can connect quickly with the client. Definitely. I, I exactly. Don't... You're on the mark. You're on the mark. That's exactly yeah. that, Celia. I love what you say. You know, the whole idea is that a handcrafted image. Um, it's sort of like, did you ever see a program called uh, Jamie Oliver? On on, he he was a cook. He is a cook. Uh, he, he makes food, and so he goes to the markets all over where he lives, and he buys food ingredients, and he comes back to his house, and he cooks them quickly, and he gives his friends with a glass of wine. But he does it so quickly. But he buys fresh garlic, fresh mushrooms, you know, he, he just puts it all together very quickly and it's all delicious. Oh, and then yeah, the, the it, it, it's a program on on on, the a, chef. Yeah. on, on, on television. And um, if people still call it television. And um, so this is kind of what we need to become when we're trying to be more successful. Yeah. Maybe I don't know if you're working for yourself or a commercial firm, if you have these skills, but these skills are what I wanted to say. You need to learn within a design environment. And we have a wonderful community that nurtures these skills on, on a six-month window. So you need about six months to become a master, but that will last for the rest of your life. You know, you, it's not, it's you need to invest in yourself and it, and and whatever that means to you. Um these skills are invaluable to any design architect. Um, and I, I don't know, you know, it's 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 bad practice. It's one thing seeing a method, but then you you need the guidance and structure to just like you did at design school, you know, possibly when you were there, you know, you have to just really, you know, kind of get feedback from people. Are you doing this right? Are you doing this wrong? You know, and and no man's an island, no woman's an island, you know, and we all get isolated mm -hmm. behind our computers. So so you, you kind of um, need human interaction. I'm sorry, Wilson, you were going to ask a question. No, yeah, I was asking a question about the card. You said the special um, a video card that you need for um, uh, the 5D render is... Uh, you 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 gave me sorry. You told us a, a particular video card that we would need. But... Yeah. So look, you can type what video card you need into Google and say, uh, what video card do I need for my PC? If you've got a laptop, you've got a problem because laptops you can't upgrade easily. But if you've got oh. like a desktop, you know, like sort of like a, a box, you can upgrade. So so what I wanted to say is that you. Can type in Google, ask D5, uh, like ask what what cards are best. But 
Uh, I would say an RTX 4060 minimum. An RTX. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is the company. It's one of the biggest companies in the world right now. They make all these video cards. I've got a RTX 4070. And um, it really, it's like, you can see my, my laptop's behind here. I threw it away the other day. You know, it's just... Okay. New, new so I have, I, I have that problem because I work from a laptop. So that means I have to figure out uh, getting a, a desktop to be able to use that. No, you can get a laptop, with, but then you have to buy uh, a new laptop. Okay. For D5, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I hope that helps. Yeah. That was my choice. It's cheaper to buy a box. Um, but, um, you know, you can get everything all in one. A great computer to get is the HP Omen. They, they all set up for this already, you know. And you can just go to HP and, and take a look for an HP Omen with a 407. Oh card. I know not everyone's got the money to buy laptops right now and, and boxes, but that really at the end of the day is um the, the tech that you know you need to upgrade your tech unfortunately to use D5. But for the artful render, you don't need uh to upgrade your tech. Right, right. So you said the, the H the what you recommend would be the HP Omen for i7. Is that what you said? You can use the latest R7. You know what? Send me an email, Wilson, and I'll send you the specs of my machine and you can go and ask. All right. Thank you. Your city, uh, if I can put something together like that for you. All okay? right. I'm just, I'm not a big tech whiz, so I don't, I don't really know. Um, there's so many different components that go into computers these days. It's very difficult to tell you exactly, but definitely the video card, I understand. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that was a great presentation, though. I think the you know the 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 D five render really cuts down the time a lot r relative to the um uh, to the uh actual render process. It uh, I believe it's it's a good time saver. Yeah, absolutely. That's you. You know what? It's even faster than I are. You know. So artificial intelligence claims to be so wonderful. I, you know, I just, I just feel that this is even more wonderful because you get to be part of it as well. You know. Anyway, so I hope hope that helped, guys. I'm about to jump into another Zoom, and I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. Any more last questions? I've got two minutes. Don't be scared to hi. ask. Hi, Jason. This is Michael. Yes, Michael. Hi. Hi, uh, I'm an architect. I'm in Colorado, uh, in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, so I'm in a different part of the world than you are. Uh, uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for your presentation. This is the second presentation that I've sat in and watched from you. You, you do a fantastic job of your presentations and your, your uh, design and tech skills are very admirable. I have a great appreciation for what you do as a designer as well as uh, a teacher and a presenter, very, very impressed with what you do. And I just wanted to let you know, I'm very interested in your program. I have had my own solo practice for 21 years. I do residential work. Uh, I live in a uh, ski resort town and I do a wide range of product uh, projects, but everything about using different types of technologies and different types of programs in the design process is really what I want to learn to further my own practice. I've been using Revit for about 13 years and that's pretty much all that I use. And it's great for some things and it's very, very limiting in other things. And one area that I'm lacking in is my uh, design presentation skills. So a lot of what you're talking about is things that I have really wanted to improve and learn about in my, my own practice. That's awesome. Awesome. Absolutely. I hear you. And it's a great thing that you're using Revit because Revit's a, Revit's a fantastic tool, but it can do two different things. You know, it can give you your construction documentation, but it's the most marvelous design tool. And um, 
I haven't ever seen anything like uh, the, the the massing that I enjoy within it, you know. Um, I just really enjoy that tool so much. And there's just so many things that you can do within it. So it's great that you know Revit. That just gives you a springboard, you know. And, and then it just means adding some stuff on, right? You know, you don't really need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to, you know, kind of explore, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, great, Michael. Michael is so... Uh, what is your surname, Michael, so I can uh, remember you? Kukas, uh, P-U-K-A-S. Okay, okay. Because I have a lot of Michaels in, 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 in my audience, so uh, just I recognize you. But um, go for it, Mike. Is there anything else you want to ask? Yes. Oh, Kukas, there you go. Yeah. So what other tools are you using, Mark? Are you using Revit? How, how do you put a presentation together are using Photoshop or, or InDesign? How, how, how does it No, work? I primarily use Revit um, and I use it with my clients with Zoom meetings so I can give them real-time views of the project as it's developing. So I really don't even use, because of the nature of the work I do at residential, I don't even use Revit. Uh, Revit's massing very much. I've tried it and I find it's just easier for me to use the walls, floors, and roof tools to develop building massing. And then I can walk clients through that and then I can do basic renderings with it. But as you know, Revit's really limited in its rendering capabilities. Yeah. So I can use it effectively to show clients how the design is progressing but I want to take things to another level that you're showing so I can be more competitive in my area. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. You know, it definitely, definitely sounds like, um, you know, that a little as bit well of being efficient, What I really appreciate about what you said at the beginning of your presentation was about efficiency in the design process. And with Revit, it's very easy for me to get bogged down into the technicalities of getting Revit to do things that I want it to do. And that is a, uh, a detriment to my own process as well as limitations of what Revit can do. Revit likes kind of likes to be very yeah, precise yeah, in its own yeah, way. Yeah. Um, but I really appreciate no, what you said about being able to but, uh... design and explore options very quickly and efficiently. That's, yeah, that's really exactly, important. exactly. I love what you're saying. I think, you know, the, the problem in the world is that um, we get sold and we get committed to one thing. And um, I've seen it so often in most of the commercial pr practices that I have worked is that it happens to everyone. And then they get so bogged down with the one software because it, they think it can do everything that they need it to do. And the truth is it can't. I mean, it, Revit does have rendering capabilities and it tries to do stuff and it, and I'm sure it can do stuff, but it's it's just, it's not made for that, you know. It's, it, it, it specializes in documentation and, and 3D modeling. And so absolutely, you know, that just to be able to understand what other softwares can do and can accomplish, that Revit can't, and then put them all together is really where your headspace needs to be as a designer these days, you know. And um, it's it's important to recognize that if that's what you want to, you know, kind of put in your trajectory. So uh, I fully, I hear you, I hear you. And that's exactly what happened to me in the beginning as well. So 100% can relate. Okay. Yeah, I... Okay, Mike. Great to hear from you. Any more questions? One more, two more. It's Charles, Celia, Peter, Ibun. Okay, guys. Fantastic. I absolutely love this presentation. It's been Thank exhilarating. You. Yes. Okay. You want to ask another question before I go? Okay. Okay, great, guys. And we'll speak to you soon. Watch out for the replay. I'll send the replay out tomorrow if you want to rewatch it. And um, thank you for sharing your your precious time with me this fine evening. And thank really you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank again, you. Jason. Happy Father July.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Wilson Macho. <laughs> yes, how are you? <laughs> Fine, thank you. We'll link some other time. Yes, we will. You are, you are online. I yes. got you now. Okay, that's beautiful. Have a good thank one. You, you too. <laughs> Bye, guys.